For a century, the Panama Canal has facilitated global trade, serving as a crucial artery for transporting goods between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. However, this dominance may soon be challenged as Mexico prepares to unveil its latest endeavor, the Interoceanic Corridor of the Isthmus of Tehuantepec. This ambitious project aims to provide an alternative route for maritime trade, potentially altering the current dynamics of international shipping. Before delving into Mexico's new initiative, it's essential to understand the significance of the Panama Canal. Alongside the Suez Canal, it stands as one of the world's most renowned artificial waterways, traversing the Isthmus of Panama. Essentially, an isthmus refers to a narrow strip of land that connects two larger land masses. In the case of the Isthmus of Panama, it serves as the link between North and South America, with the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans flanking its sides. Despite its relatively modest length of 65 kilometers, the Panama Canal holds immense strategic importance in global trade, compensating for its size with unparalleled utility and efficiency. Have a look at this map of the Americas. Prior to the construction of the Panama Canal in 1914, traversing from one side to the other was a cumbersome ordeal for cargo ships. Consider a vessel originating from Europe with goods destined for California. Without the Panama Canal, it would have to embark on a lengthy journey southwards to Chile, navigate through the perilous Strait of Magellan, and then veer northward again. Even for relatively swift ships, this journey could span several weeks, if not months, due to the treacherous conditions and unpredictable currents in the Strait of Magellan. Moreover, the alternative route, the Northwest Passage at the northern tip of the Americas, remained impassable for most of the year due to ice obstruction, rendering it impractical for navigation by ships. Recognizing the need for a solution, the United States formulated a plan in 1902 to construct a shipping canal in Central America. This proposed canal promised to significantly reduce travel time, enabling ships to traverse the distance in less than a day, and cutting the journey from the Atlantic to the Pacific by approximately 12,000 kilometers, a considerable improvement that would save weeks of travel. Constructing the canal presented immense challenges. Laborers had to employ dynamite, drills, and steam-powered shovels to excavate over 200 million cubic meters of earth. If all the excavated earth were piled into a single mountain, it would surpass the volume of the Great Pyramid of Giza by 80 times and stand nearly twice as tall as the Empire State Building, a colossal feat of human engineering. Compounding the difficulty, workers endured sweltering temperatures exceeding 40 degrees Celsius, resulting in nearly 6,000 fatalities attributed to heat stroke, rock slides, and tropical diseases. Overall, the construction conditions were far from ideal. In addition to these formidable labor challenges, the project faced significant engineering obstacles. There existed a nearly 30 meter disparity in elevation between the highest and lowest points along the proposed canal route. To overcome this disparity, the construction team implemented a series of locks and gates to facilitate changes in water elevation. These locks enabled ships to ascend to the canal's peak elevation before descending once more. Despite the monumental efforts involved, the construction of the Panama Canal incurred a staggering cost of $375 million for the United States, equivalent to approximately $12 billion in today's currency. Nevertheless, despite the formidable hurdles, the Panama Canal officially opened in August 1914 after a decade of construction. The SS Ancon became the inaugural vessel to traverse the canal, marking the beginning of a new era in maritime transportation. In its inaugural year alone, approximately a thousand ships navigated the canal, a number that has steadily increased in the ensuing years. Currently, over 10,000 ships utilize the Panama Canal annually, collectively transporting approximately half a billion tons of goods. These vessels pay a toll for passage through the canal, with larger ships facing fees of around half a million US dollars. However, despite the expense, utilizing the canal proves advantageous as it eliminates the need for ships to navigate the arduous route through the Strait of Magellan. The Panama Canal has significantly reshaped global trade dynamics. However, in 2024, this iconic waterway may encounter formidable competition. It's time to delve into the Interoceanic Corridor of the Isthmus of Tehuantepec, CAT, alternatively referred to as the CIAT. This project's name is derived from its Spanish designation. To trace the origins of the CIT, we must revisit the late 19th century, a period coinciding with the United States' initial contemplation of the Panama Canal. Interestingly, Mexico too was exploring similar concepts during this time, 
In 1884, José de la Cruz Porfirio Díaz Mori ascended to the presidency of Mexico. Hailing from the southern coastal state of Oaxaca, he embarked on an ambitious endeavor, the construction of a railway linking Oaxaca to the northern coast of Veracruz. Essentially, Díaz aimed to establish a railway connection between the Atlantic and Pacific coasts, envisioning a solution to challenges akin to those later addressed by the Panama Canal. Despite its relative obscurity, in January 1907, Díaz's vision materialized with the inauguration of the Tren Interoceanico or Interoceanic Railway. Seven years ahead of the Panama Canal's completion, the Interoceanic Railway was already operational, immediately attracting global traders. Within the subsequent years, significant quantities of cargo were efficiently transported along its route, propelling Mexico into an economically prosperous position within the realm of international trade. However, this prosperity proved fleeting. Upon the Panama Canal's inauguration, the majority of shipping companies swiftly abandoned the Interoceanic Railway in favor of the newly opened canal. In 1914, the railway experienced a one-third reduction in cargo volume, plummeting further to nearly 80% less within a year. Curiously, despite the railway offering a quicker route than the Panama Canal, proximity to America, and time-saving advantages, the latter was overwhelmingly preferred. Several critical factors contributed to this preference. Firstly, many of the shipping companies were American-based, predisposed to supporting an American-led initiative over a Mexican competitor. Moreover, Mexico was embroiled in a civil war at the time, deterring potential users due to concerns over safety and stability. From a logistical standpoint, utilizing a shipping lane was more straightforward as it eliminated the need to transfer cargo onto trains. Consequently, with a drastic decline in traffic, the Interoceanic Railway became economically unsustainable and fell into disrepair. For a century, it remained in a state of neglect until the emergence of a determined new president in Mexico, López Obrador. The former railway line has undergone a transformation, evolving into a new corridor connecting the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans an ambitious venture poised to rival the nearby Panama Canal. This bold initiative was officially unveiled shortly thereafter, outlining plans for three primary rail lines, Line Z, Line FA, and Line K. Despite extensive efforts, the meanings behind these letters remain elusive. Progress on the CIIC commenced in June 2020, marked by activities such as vegetation clearance, removal of old tracks, and installation of state-of-the-art replacements, Anticipated to stretch over 1,000 kilometers with its three main lines, the new railway promises to be a substantial infrastructure undertaking. The Mexican government has additionally outlined plans to establish a series of industrial parks along the railway route, underscoring President López Obrador's steadfast commitment to the project. López Obrador's determination was further evidenced in 2023, when he deployed the military to secure ownership of a section of the old railway, previously held by a private entity. While assurances of compensation were later extended to the company, López Obrador's priority was to safeguard governmental control over the critical stretch of railway, minimizing the risk of project disruptions due to stalled negotiations with obstinate private interests. Indigenous communities in Oaxaca have raised concerns regarding its environmental impact, particularly regarding deforestation and habitat destruction caused by construction activities. Tensions have escalated, resulting in clashes between protesters and construction personnel, with reports of arrests and forced relocations of local families. Despite these contentious aspects, many within the region believe that the project's potential benefits will outweigh its drawbacks. Some experts project that the CIIT could generate up to half a million jobs for local residents and attract approximately $50 billion in international investment, underscoring its potential as a transformative force for the region's economic development. This economic upturn has the potential to revolutionize the country, a prospect upon which President López Obrador is banking. In August 2023, Line Z achieved official completion milestone. Subsequently, in September, López Obrador personally boarded a passenger train, embarking on a journey spanning the entire route. Clocking in at less than nine hours, this voyage officially surpassed the Panama Canal in terms of speed. Fast forward two months to just days before Christmas in 2023, and the inaugural trains welcomed the general public, commencing operations of ferrying local passengers from the Atlantic to the Pacific Coast. The remaining two lines are slated for completion by the conclusion of 2024. Despite these strides, there are still essential tasks on the government's agenda before the CIIT can facilitate international shipping. 
Notably, the project entails a comprehensive overhaul of port facilities at both termini of the railway lines to enhance suitability for cargo ships. This includes the construction of a substantial breakwater at the port of Salina Cruz, comprising hundreds of thousands of tons of rock to fortify the harbor against adverse weather conditions. Progress on the breakwater is ongoing, edging closer to completion with each passing update, signaling the impending readiness of the CIT for cargo transportation. This development raises intriguing questions about the future of the Panama Canal. Some experts posit that the CIT could emerge as a more cost-effective and expeditious alternative to the Panama Canal. Should this speculation materialize, it would rationalize companies redirecting their shipping routes through Mexico's railway corridor instead of utilizing the Panama Canal crossing. Potentially, the Panama Canal could face challenges similar to those encountered by the original version of the Mexican Railway a century ago, possibly resulting in a decline in business. However, contrary to such speculation, the primary objective of the CIIT is not to supplant the Panama Canal, but rather to complement its operations. Despite the Panama Canal's capability of accommodating up to 4 million cargo containers annually, it often struggles to meet escalating demand. Moreover, the canal has grappled with operational issues, exacerbated by a severe drought in Panama in 2023, prompting authorities to implement restrictions on canal usage to conserve water resources. This restriction led to intense competition among shipping companies, with exorbitant bids being made to secure passage slots, while other vessels were left stranded, awaiting transit opportunities. In such scenarios, Alternatives like the CIT could alleviate pressure on the Panama Canal, offering shipping companies an alternative route during periods of high demand. This diversification would enhance shipping reliability, providing companies with additional avenues to ensure timely delivery of goods to their destinations. Notably, the water shortages in Panama disrupted deliveries in the lead up to Christmas, underscoring the potential benefits of a supplementary route like the CIIT in maintaining supply chain efficiency. Collaboration between the Panama Canal and the CIIT could further stimulate global trade by facilitating increased movement of goods between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. As one Mexican official aptly stated in 2023, the significance of the project transcends merely connecting the country. It aims to foster global connectivity. Looking ahead, the CIIT may encounter its own competition. In 2014, a Chinese entrepreneur endeavored to construct a canal in Nicaragua as an alternative to the Panama Canal. However, financial setbacks resulting from the Chinese stock market crash in 2015 led to the abandonment of the project. Additionally, the potential opening of the Northwest Passage due to global warming could introduce yet another alternative route between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, further reshaping the landscape of transoceanic trade. Undoubtedly, the evolving dynamics of trade between the Pacific and Atlantic are poised for significant transformations. What are your thoughts on Mexico's latest mega project? We welcome your insights in the comments section below. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for our next video.